Of course it's counterintuitive that you can get something from nothing. Of course common sense doesn't allow you to get something from nothing. That's why it's interesting. It's got to be interesting in order to give rise to the universe at all. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. <laughs> The nothing that Lawrence Krauss is talking about, whether or not it's what a naive person would conceive as nothing or what a sophisticated physicist would consider to be nothing, it is going to be something much, much simpler than a creative intelligence. Something can't come from nothing. Something can come from nothing, and that's what physicists are now telling us. I'd been accustomed to the idea that pushing back from biology into physics, you get back to a zone where we don't understand, and you, and you get back to a zone where there's not nothing, but sort of a primeval sim simplicity. What I learned from, from your book, which I find stunningly exciting, is that it is literally nothing. It is literally nothing. It is literally nothing. Of course, common sense doesn't allow you to get something from nothing. That's why it's interesting. It's got to be interesting in order to give rise to the universe at all. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. It is literally nothing. It is literally n something nothing. Well, you can dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever it is, it's very, very simple. Yeah. And <laughs> why is that funny? <laughs> Well, I think it's a bit funny to be trying to define nothing. <laughs> it is literally nothing. Well, you can week. dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. The nothing that Lawrence Krauss is talking about, whether or not it's what a naive person would conceive as nothing or what a sophisticated physicist would consider to be nothing. It is going to be something much, much simpler than a creative intelligence. It is going to be something, it is going to be something, it is going to be something, going to be something, going to be something, going to be something. The nothing that Lawrence Krauss is talking about is going to be something, going to be something, going to be something. It's possible to dispute whether nothing is quite the right word. It is literally nothing. Well, you can dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. It is literally nothing. Well, I'm not a philosopher, that'll be obvious. Um, uh, perhaps you should have invited a philosopher. It is literally nothing. It is going to be something, going to be something much, much simpler than a creative intelligence. Dawkins seems to be confused about nothingness as well. He seems to be calling it something. That's quite right. When you look at Dawkins' statements, he has been taken in by Krauss's use of the word nothing to describe the early condition of the universe. So he says, and I quote, the nothing Lawrence Krauss is talking about is going to be something much, much simpler than a creative intelligence. The nothing that Lawrence Krauss is talking about, whether or not it's what a naive person would conceive as nothing or what a sophisticated physicist would consider to be nothing, it is going to be something much, much simpler than a creative intelligence. Now, that's a self-contradiction, to say that the nothing is something. The audience picked up on that because they started laughing when he said that, and he said, why is that funny? Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> that comes at the line where he says, well, you can right. dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever it is, it's very, very simple. Yeah. And <laughs> why is that funny? Whatever it is, it is very, very simple. Well, I think it's a bit funny to be trying to define nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the audience, as you say, laughs. He says, why yeah. is that funny? He doesn't see the, the point. And yet, it's very clear that nothingness is non-being. That's just not anything, and therefore has no properties, no powers. Uh, it doesn't have even simplicity. So this is just a, a gross misuse of equivocal terms to characterize things like the quantum vacuum. Of course, common sense doesn't allow you to get something from nothing. That's why it's interesting. It's got to be interesting in order to give rise to the universe at all. 
something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. It is literally nothing. Well, you can dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. It is literally nothing. If you press Professor Krauss, he admits that he's not really talking about nothing. He himself says, and I quote, by nothing, I don't mean nothing. Nothing isn't nothing anymore in physics. Nothing isn't nothing anymore in physics. There could be literally nothing which then, from which something suddenly springs. And I mean, it is very hard to grasp it, and, and I certainly can't grasp it.